they failed to come and brief me on that information. It was never shared with me, and I became aware of that information when it was published in the, in the Globe and Mail on, in, in early May of this year. That's the first time I became aware of it, and I, they, I only, only became aware uh, that there was an actual memo that had been produced when Mr. Johnson showed me that memo. And so, just to be very clear, CSIS did not brief me on that document. They, they apparently, I'm, I'm advised that they sent it to another office with the intent that I would somehow get to see it. But quite frankly, if, if their intent was actually that I would actually have that information, my expectation would be that they would come and brief me on it. And secondly, it might have been helpful if, if they'd sent me an email or a text or a phone call to alert me that there was a report that they, they intended that I should see and perhaps give me a clue on where I would find it. Whose responsibility was it to, to make sure that the intent materialized in your no, mind? No, to be very clear, there, there are missile directives that require the director of CSIS to, to bring matters of, of national security and foreign interference to the attention of the minister. And the, the, the CSIS collects that information. They do a very important job for the country, and they have a responsibility to brief matters. To, to the minister that need to be brought to the minister's attention. And they would do that quite routinely. Unfortunately, in this case, for the intelligence and the, and the memo with respect to Mr. Chong, that was never briefed to me. It was never brought to my attention. I was never made and aware of it. My question is, whose responsibility is it? Well, clearly, there was, and I think Mr. Johnson, in his report, identified a number of very significant um, systemic failures in the way in which national security intelligence information was communicated between our national security intelligence agencies, notably CSIS, and a number of decision makers, including the Minister of Public Safety, that that information was not properly uh, forwarded and tracked and briefed on a number of different occasions, and most notably some of this information, particularly around uh, with respect to Mr. Chong. Quite frankly, I would have liked to have seen that information at the time because I would have ensured that, first of all, Mr. Chong was given enough information to take the steps necessary to keep himself and his family safe, that the Sergeant at Arms, who has a responsibility for the security of, of members of Parliament. I said that, but I'm, I'm trying to find out do you think in your mind that it ceases that didn't uh, make its job properly to make sure that you know that this briefing exists? Ceases routinely brief me on matters of national uh -huh. security and foreign interference. But unfortunately, for that briefing, they chose not, for whatever reason, to actually come and brief the minister. And as I've said, they did that quite routinely in three different ways. That did not happen in this case. And instead, the, 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 their, their briefing note was sent to a, another deputy head, to another office, not my office, and I was never advised that the report existed or where it could be located. It would have been very helpful in hindsight had the director contacted me, sent me a text message or a phone call or an email or a letter or however he wanted to communicate that there was an important report that he intended that I read. He testified last night and I believe him. I don't know, he was a very decent man, a hardworking guy. But he said he intended that I read that message and unfortunately I was not given an opportunity well, because I was never advised that it had been sent and, and I was never advised where it could be located. Do you know if at, at deputy minister level uh, it, the memo was read? I have no idea. That is, that's a question that would have to be put to the deputy minister, but the deputy minister never advised me, the deputy minister of public safety at the time, and director Vigneault never advised me of the existence of this report or, or that it was available or that like, did, Director Vignon testified last night, and I believe him absolutely. He intended that I see that. But unfortunately, it would have been far more effective if he'd actually come to my office and briefed me on it. That did not happen. Or at least alerted me that it existed so I could go find it. The former public safety minister, with what happened with Bernardo, um, the staff not telling the current public safety minister about this transfer of a high profile prisoner, where did that breakdown happen in the office? And, and again, I have no idea why that, how that information broke down, but, but comic, I, I know. Bernardo, I was a cop in Toronto and, and, and in, in that community. I know the impact that he had on my community of Scarborough and, and the fear that he caused in our community. I also know the Mahaffey and French families and the terrible trauma that he inflicted upon um, whole communities, as well as those, those two families most tragically impacted. He's a vile individual. I hope he stays in prison. Why is there such Should a Why is there How do you explain, though, that it didn't pierce the consciousness of staff to the public safety minister that 
this is who this transfer was about. Well, I know who this man is, I, I, and I think most Canadians do. I, I, I can't explain that. I wasn't part of those conversations. I don't know the, the, why that information was not shared with the minister. Uh, What's your gut what, reaction as a former well, my, gut rea well, as, as my, my gut reaction really on behalf of all the people that I've ever served and represented is, is Ber Bernardo is, is, is someone who inflicted terrible harm and trauma on large numbers of, of our citizens, my community in Scarborough, um, in, in, in the Niagara region as, as well, the terrible impact that he had on, on the families um, who lost loved ones. He's, it, it's, I, I think it's, it's, it's entirely appropriate that he be in jail and he stay in jail. Conservatives want Mendicino to resign. Do you think that's an appropriate course of action, given the sensitivities of this issue? No, I, I think our job is, is, is not to quit every time something you know, doesn't work out exactly right. Our job is to fix it. You know, so so I, I think resignation is the wrong thing, but I think remedy is what's required. And so we have to look at what, what didn't work here, what needs to be done better, and we have to fix it. Minister, is it normal?